Hello everyone and welcome to this video and welcome to Sweden. A really really nice winter morning here in Sweden. Sunny weather and lots of snow so I like that very much. This video I will talk about uh, some of the most interesting rune stones that I have seen the last year or so. And I start with a rune stone that is uh, situated around 500 meters from my own home. And uh, it's this one here. This rune stone here has been standing here for 1000 years approximately. And it's a little bit different from other rune stones I have seen. And uh, we're gonna take a look at that. We'll just take away some some of the snow here so what you see here is a rune stone from uh, the 11th century and it is uh, here you have the rune letters the rune letters there i can't read the rune letters i have to trust this information signs here and you can also see in the middle a christian cross here christian cross and also which is very interesting down here this is the head of a snake here you know the mead gourd snake who surrounded the world that was the belief of the norse people so uh, it's a little bit hard to see the cross now i think uh, uh, you can see it there there you see the cross and the snake down here and now the question is, of course, uh, the rune letters, what do they say? Well, they have uh, information sign here, and it says that uh, this is a rune stone here in Westerhaninge, the place where I live. And it's a rune stone with an inscription from uh, the, uh, the 11th century. And it said that Sven raised this stone after Rodisil, his father. And then it says that the stone is probably situ situated on uh, his original place. Sven was the most common name during the Viking Age in the rune inscriptions. Rodisil is however very very unusual. There is only one exception to that and that is known from Gotland. So maybe Maybe the name Rodesil was a Gotland name. And uh, how come Gotland and uh, Westerhaninge is quite far away? Well, back in the Viking era, it was not so far away because this road here was the road, probably in a way, that led to the sea over there where you could go to Gotland. Gotland is in the Baltic Sea, if you, if you don't know that uh, from your Swedish geography class. Anyway, <laughs> uh, during the Viking era, the water level here in, in Sweden was much higher than today, maybe five or six meters. So maybe the shoreline was much closer to this rune stone. So this was the way to Gotland here. That's my theory anyway. In this video I will drive around here, uh, Västerhaninge, Österhaninge, the place where I live, to show you some of those rune stones which I think are the most interesting here. The Swedish authority, Riksantikvarieämbete, they have a, a website where you can look at uh, different, uh, what we call fornminnen, the uh, antique relics. And if you look at that map, you can see that this area around here are filled with these relics, these interesting historical places. Now we are heading for a farm here, uh, uh, where they have a rune stone on the farm, uh, on the entrance to the farm. I've never seen that rune stone before, so it will be very interesting. Here. I can see the runestone from here. It's an uh, interesting runestone, this one, because it's uh, it has animals on it. I've seen that on the internet. And uh, I can see from here also that's a, a snake here. And also an information sign. That will be interesting. I haven't seen this one before. 
so what do we see here on this rune stone here? We can see some kind of animal. What do you think? What kind of animal is it? Write in the comment section. And here I can see the snake. This rune stone is beautiful. It's absolutely awesome. Let's see here. Let's see. Ah. ah. <laughs> Well, too much snow and not just too much sign. I have to look up on the internet what he said on this rune stone here. I just love it. Look at that animal here. Yeah. And the snake and the inscription here. Okay, let's go. We uh, travel to a place where there is a very, very interesting runestone because it has no inscription, only a cross. I will show you and explain. In Sweden, there are 2,500 runestones, maybe 3,000 runestones in all, and most of them were inscripted in uh, the 11th century, maybe in the beginning of the 11th century. So they are around 1,000 years old. In the, in the Viking era, they made runes on pieces of wood and uh, pieces of, of bone also to send. It was their uh, way to communicate and it was like a text message, but in the year 1000 around there. But these messages are gone, unfortunately, most of them anyway. And uh, what le what's left of the rune inscriptions are those made on stone. You see the yellow sign? It says Kalvsvik. This place here is a farm called Kalvsvik. But uh, the original name is not Kalvsvik. It is Karlsvi. And Karl is a man or a warrior. And a V is a holy place during the Viking era. Now we'll stop here to look at another stone here and uh, that stone is also very interesting. Okay now I will see how we'll manage this one. It's not very broad road here. So I will, I'm not going into the side of the road here. In the winter time I'll be stuck there. Here you have this stone. Here is the stone here, but I will uh, I will park somewhere close so I can show you. Up here we have the rune stone. I have to climb a little bit. <laughs> here we have the rune stone. It's a little, maybe a little bit hard to see now when it's winter, but you can see the inscription here. And here we also have a sign here. It says it's a rune stone with inscription from the 11th century. And it says Ödgund and Ernjad raised this stone after their brother. It also says uh, that uh, the rune stone, they found the rune stone in 1956 after they were uh, d after some digging work on this uh, estate here. Uh, probably it was raised uh, as a bridge stone over a river that was here before. Uh, it says that the inscription is damaged and the inscription uh, you can all just see fragments of it and that's uh, what we can see also. Probably there are two women here, Ödgun and Arenjad, raised the, uh, the stone. Probably it says that uh, the name of the brother was Anund. Interesting. Two women named here, Armjad and Ödgun. Arnjad and Ödgun, not very common names. 
these days but during the viking age maybe it was common names we look at the rune stone once more a little bit damaged but uh, you can see the inscriptions here running up on this side here and uh, you have to think that this stone was covered in uh, the earth for many many hundreds of years so it that's why it's a little bit damaged so let's have tried not to slip here <laughs> then i would go down here so hey you okay let's continue we we go further and i will show you another rune stone that's very interesting now i'm really in the countryside here <laughs> So now over there you can see the highway leading into Stockholm and over here there is an interesting rune stone that I will show you. On the other side of this uh, highway over there that's uh, the biggest uh, burial ground from the Norse time uh, from the Iron Age 2000 years ago, 1500 years ago in all of the Nordic countries so when they built this highway they actually took the highway and uh, cut the burial ground in two I don't really understand how they could do that but uh, sometimes modern people they don't care about uh, ancient relics and old burial grounds from the Viking Age here we can see the big rune stone that's very very interesting because uh, here it is a beautiful rune stone but as you can see there is hardly any inscriptions on it so this might this can be an unfinished rune stone but I have read some historians, experts on runestones, they have a theory that this runestone here was the symbol that all of this place, this holy burial ground here, was now Christian because there is one inscription on it. There is a Christian cross. It's very hard to see as I have to use my glasses here. And the theory is also that uh, this place here, as, as I told you before, it's a V, a holy place from the Viking era. And that they also had a great Viking hall here also. And they had a Lund, the small piece of wood, where they made the human sacrifice and sacrificed all kinds of animals there. And maybe, you don't know that, but maybe this was the Lund here. And that is why this stone with a single cross is placed over there because now it's Christian and now people have left the Norse traditions with the human and the animal sacrifices and now they are Christians and that's why this stone is here. Okay, thanks for watching this video. I will post many more videos this year. So make sure to subscribe to the channel. And also if you're interested in Swedish history, you can go to Facebook, where I have a Facebook group called World of Swedish History. And I write almost every day about the Swedish history there. So goodbye for now and see you.